Hey everybody, welcome back to the Attract and Stand Out podcast. I am so excited for today's interview. I have with me Danielle Brooker. She teaches high achieving, big hearted women how to break up with busy for good and still achieve all that they want. Passionate about growth, great coffee, which ooh, I love coffee too, um, and all the things well being. Through her coaching, she supports women in their 30s who are transitioning through phases of life issues. From wanting to change careers, figuring out relationship breakdowns, or when to start a family to live and lead from a place of joy. So, Danielle, welcome to the show. It's so great to see you. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to be here. And thank you so much for reading out the bio. That's actually like one of the big business lessons as well. Like listen to someone say your bio back to you and like spot spot ways to make it sound quicker or faster or capture it all in one like 30 second slot. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. It's so fun to read bios too, because now that I've started this podcast and I'm interviewing a lot of people, it's fun because some people have really long bios and some have like super short and sweet, but yeah, it's such a fun thing to learn about people though. Like, like little hidden gems. And I love when people make them personal, like with what you did, where you added like that you love coffee, because those are some of the things that capture people right like if somebody else loves coffee they're like "Ooh, Danielle loves coffee too or Darlene likes this like it gives you that ability to connect in that way absolutely yeah no I I I could have conversations about coffee all day long so that had to be in the bio (laughs) absolutely well give us a little bit of background story um where do you live what does your family look like and then we'll dive into kind of the business stuff after that. Yeah, for sure. So I'm currently based in London, UK, but you'll pick up very quickly that that's not my accent. So I'm actually Australian. And I guess part of my business journey is, you know, is the London story as well. Like I traveled, you know, I moved to London as part of this like pipe pipe dream that I had, but I just got to this point in my life where it was like, well, it's now or never. So I lived here with my long-term partner. He moved over from Australia with me and we've been here seven years now. And it just, it went so quickly and it's very much home for us now. That's awesome. So what was it that brought you there then? Was it? Sorry. Yeah, it's interesting. So for me, I just, I fell in love with London. Like I had like, I don't know, I just fell in love with London as a city. I dreamt about it ever since I was little. I think I heard stories of people traveling. It was this big, beautiful place. I I was actually born in South Africa. So I think um, when I moved over to Australia, when I was nine years old, I always had that element of like relatives and friends living in different countries. So I think that planted a seed. Um, And I'd spent some time here traveling and staying with friends and things like that but I I just had had it in me that I wanted to live in London and I guess what started to happen is I would watch all these other people do it and I'd start getting grumpy I'd be like well they're doing it what like how come they did it they they weren't talking about it for like 10 years like I want to do it and I was getting really annoyed with myself and that that kind of part of my life really culminated at um, the peak of a very stressful time at work um a burnout period, having to step away from my job, a job that I, you know, it was a great job, but I just no longer felt great in it. And so it was really during that time of transition that I had to stop and start to ask myself some really different questions. So that's where the London journey actually, you know, became more of a reality. It was less of this dream. And I was like, no, it's now, it it has to happen now. Okay. I love that that is part of your story because so many people I talk to, like we have these big goals, we have these big dreams and bucket lists and all these things. And then we don't ever do anything with them. Like we go like, Oh, we'll do it one day. We'll, we'll travel one day. We'll move one day. Um, Mm -hmm. But I love when people just like find that this, like they have that yearning or that itch they need to scratch, right? Like they're like, I want to do something different. And then you just do it and you go move, you know, to a whole new country or you, start traveling when that's something that you wanted to do. So I love that that's um, something that you've done. Yeah, absolutely. And interestingly, whilst it culminated at the point where I was like changing direction and, you know, wanting to make like the next kind of career move, I knew that what I was doing wasn't right for me, but I actually put the London dream first. I said, look, fine, go to London, justify it all you like, you know, yes, it's a great career move. There's opportunities, but most importantly, go to London. And, you know, that's where a lot of the business journey started to unfold from there and where my training started and all of that. But I was still working in the old career that I knew I didn't want anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah. So when was it that you knew that you were ready to leave that career and to like take that leap for yourself and make that transition? Yeah. Whew. I mean, it's kind of multifaceted. Like, um, you know, I, I thought I knew it and then I really knew and then I really, really knew kind of thing. Um, so I'd spent over a decade building myself up in this incredible career. I worked um, in economics and policy. I worked in the Australian government. I like everything was about what's the next move, what's the next step. Um, I always knew what I, you know, quote marks for those watching the live video um, should do next. And I got to this position where, um, you know, not only was I busy and stressed and, you know, physical symptoms showing up and all, all of the signs of like, you're taking on too much, you need to stop, but I haven't quite connected the dots. I also had this experience of, I guess, like being in a great job from the outside looking in, but not feeling great on the inside and really kind of coming home. And I guess like, I was like coming home crying every day. Like that was my experience of just like, what, like, what do I do next? And I guess to cut like a really long story short, there, there were aspects that I started to pay attention to in terms of, um, I love people. I have always been the person who's been like, yes, please, I'll do the next training. What, another workshop? Okay, you know, I'm very big picture and like strategic, but I would always gravitate towards these mentoring type roles um, in my, you know, pro you know, professional job. And then outside of work, I was just like, I would lap up anything personal development related. So I didn't know, like that was that first layer. Like I didn't know, oh my God, I absolutely need to quit my job. What, what I knew was, maybe there's some other aspect to it. I need to integrate something else. So that was like the first layering. When I then moved to the UK, I just needed a job. And so naturally I'm going to step into some, you know, like I just needed some money. I didn't, I, it was not one of these planned out things where I had like tons of savings or anything like that. It was just more of a, I need to do this now moment. And so I started working in my policy career because those were the skills I had. And the ne that was the next layering because it felt like I was stepping into it with a very definitive, I know this is not what I'm going to do forever, but I'm doing it to pay the bills. Like it was, it was almost clear in my head. I knew that I could be really good at it, but also keep exploring all of those questions that were starting to come up and follow what felt really good. And the next layer of it was actually enrolling myself in the coaching training. Actually, I, I think I sent away for like an information pack to the coaching school and like 12 or 18 months later, phoned them up and said, yeah, yeah, I'm ready sort of thing. Like it was, I, I was slow to this. Whilst I make the London thing sound quick and easy, like I, I was very slow to like actually all of this clicking into place for me. And so I started training whilst working in a full-time position and I had a beautiful team, a very supportive environment. And because I was kind of clear that that wasn't my direction, I, um, I was very open with them. Like I talked about my coaching training. I negotiated like um, reduced hours so that I could spend a day a week, you know, training and working on my coaching business. And the point at which I went full time into the, into my coaching business was similar to the London thing. This point at which I just realized like it was now or never. I, you know, I had it wasn't a particular number of clients. It wasn't a particular like revenue point or anything like that. It was just like, if I don't do it now, I know my own, my own personality type. Like I know this is different for everyone, but I knew that if I didn't kind of call it quits then that I would just keep doing this nice, lovely hobby, fun thing on the side. And it would only ever kind of grow to a certain level. Yeah. And that happens to so many of us. I feel like too, like you are doing the thing, but you're not really like, like taking yourself to a point where you can kind of be expansive and really take yourself to the next level or do the next yeah. big step because it's it's just like it's a small piece of your life it's not like the full focus and it's not like the big picture yes. so when you move like the career out of the way and you take it on full time and really put yourself out there is when like that big shift can happen because you're able to take 30 hours a week to focus on something and to market and to grow things versus when you're side hustling it, like you only have so much extra time per day that you can really do the things. So it's important to realize that you have like 10 hours a week in the beginning, but now you have 30 hours and you can really um, expand and grow and show up in such a more 
um, bold way that your visibility stands out and people can actually know who the heck you are and what you're doing and like how you can show up for them. Absolutely. And for me, it was, it was almost less about the time and more about the seriousness with which I was taking it. Like I was, I was like, there was no escaping the fact that I have a business now. Like I just had to treat it in a whole different way. I actually had to be step into that role. Mm. That's interesting too, because like, like it's almost like the, the, the ownership, right? That like you're really doing this and you're showing up for the world in a way that's bigger than you've ever been able to before. But yeah, like you step into it completely with your whole self mm -hmm. versus like having like your pinky toe in the swimming pool, right? Like you're yeah. completely dived in at that yeah. point. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you think is like one of the biggest challenges that you've had since starting your business that you had to overcome? Oh, that's a good question. The, I mean, the challenge has been like almost on that similar vein of taking myself seriously, like actually believing that I am a successful businesswoman, like not thinking that I have to act in a certain way or do it this way because once again, you know, quote marks, I should, or this is what someone else is doing. Like the challenge has been this constant process of, you know, galloping ahead with all of the should do's and then going, hang on a second, what if I just do it my way? And like every time that I've come back to me and, you know, whether that's how I actually am as a coach in my sessions, whether that's how I'm marketing myself, how many Instagram posts I should be putting out, you know, like all of that stuff, like every time I've kind of, surrendered and kind of come back to well what feels good to me and this is very much what I teach my clients so it's it's interesting that I'm ha the challenge for me is learning my own lessons is when I could come back to well what feels good to me what feels right what feels like it's more leading from my heart as opposed to all of the should do's then all the magic kind of happens like that's when all the de-layering and like honing in on my niche and like feeling more attractive and like you know just feeling better about the business itself starts to happen. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because that's the exact same way that I work with my clients as well. Like we, we talked a lot about like the shoulds and we see mm -hmm. like how other people are showing up online. We see what they're doing and we look at like, Oh, they got 500 million quote or likes on this post. So I need yeah. to <laughs> actually like this person. But then when we try it, we're like, nobody even liked it. Like I didn't get a heart or a like or anything. And it's because we're showing up not as our true selves. It's more important that we find the ways that we want to show up and market our business in a way that feels good to us and not what other people are doing. And maybe some of those things might work for us a little bit, but if we're not authentically being our true selves and doing it in a way that feels good to us, then it's not going to resonate with the people that we're trying to attract. And they, like, it's almost like that imposter syndrome might like it's, they see that you're trying to be something that you're not and it does it comes off like a little bit wonky or it's not it's like wearing I used to joke like when I first started my business that um, I wore business suits and mm -hmm. I would like go to these networking meetings in this business suit and I felt like a little girl in her mom's clothes because that wasn't me that wasn't what lit me up I felt like restricted and um, like I was playing dress up and it was when I like started you know wearing clothes that more um, felt like me and showing up more authentically like me, that's when I started like building relationships mm -hmm. and connecting. And yeah, I had clients and I, you know, made connections when I was dressed up in my mom's work clothes, <laughs> but um, yeah. I didn't feel like me. But when I could just like let that guard down and just show up authentically, like that's when I saw like a big shift in how I was um, attracting people in. Yeah. So finding those things that you feel like you should do, yeah. And then like really evaluate that situation. Like, am I doing this because I want to and it feels good and I like to show up this way? Or am I doing it because um, this big influencer is doing this and I feel like it's working for them. So I need to do it too. And what's coming up for me right now when you share that, first of all, I just love that this is what you teach because I like, I believe it in my, like, you know, in my heart to be true. What's coming up for me right now as well as, remembering the process I was taking with like take even client attraction out of it just think about like I was wanting to build my network so the way in which I was even networking was kind of like how you describe that dressing up in your mom's you know business suit I love that 
um, you know, was like, I, I was trying to be very good at networking and very good at communicating. I'm like, actually, if I just be my natural self, I'm naturally good at connecting. I like people. Like I'm actually interested in their stories. So like stop trying so hard. And it's been this really magical shift for me. And that, that started to kick in when I went full time in my business, because I suddenly was like, okay, well this, this time, all of this time is now mine. It's super valuable. Like, where do I want to put that energy and focus? And when I, when I really had that shift, I did like, I, I start to attract the most beautiful communities, nourishing, nurturing spaces that are still with me to this day, you know, whether it's been mastermind groups or one-to-one -one relationships I've, you know, developed over coffee or whatever it is, they're now my, they're my people. That's where I go for, you know, on those days when I think I'm an absolutely terrible business person and have no idea what I'm doing, which is often, um, you know, like that, that's when I say, Hey, is this normal? And like, am I supposed to feel like this? And you know, that, that in itself is a huge part of the engine of my business. Yeah. Yeah. And knowing that you have a safe space that you can go to and say like, this is how I'm feeling today. This is what's coming up for me. And then getting that reassurance too, that like, you're not alone. Like we all, every yeah. single person I talk to has like mindset stuff that comes up. Like we lack confidence. <laughs> um, some days we like rock it and we're like, whoa, like, I got this. And then the next day you're like, Oh, like nobody likes me. Woe is me. Like, how am I going to move forward? <laughs> and it's like this vicious minds play game that we do with ourselves. And it's so important that we watch for those stories that are popping up. And we really like ask ourselves, like, is this true? Is this a fact? Or is it like just a belief or a thought that we're having and really dive into it and find out like, yeah, this is um, there's no evidence to support <laughs> this thought that I'm thinking. Like, why am I having the stinking, you know, stinking feeling thought that's not serving me? It's not helping me be who I truly am. But catching it, I think the important thing is like really catching it and like being aware, at least for myself. Like, I used to have those thoughts and I didn't know how to get out of it. Like, I would, it would be like, I'd have to like, um, like swim, like doggy paddle. Like, I'm just kind of holding on and trying to get there, where now it's like, hold on a second, like, that is not true. This is not actual, like, there's no, nothing to support this. There's no science to it. Um, and then, like, catching it quick enough to go, okay, this isn't true. Let's reframe how I'm thinking about this and turn it into a, into a positive statement so that I can feel confident again and get back to work and, like, do the next thing, not let it keep me stuck and frozen. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So what would you say then, so when you're, show, like, since you are marketing now in an authentic way of just showing up and being you, what, what, what have been some of the ways that you personally have been able to show up as your truest self to grow your business? Um, so do you mean ways in terms of like, how, like how I do it or like literally the marketing strategies or both? Yeah, both. Whatever you feel like sharing. <laughs> so the way in which I do that authentically I mean, there's a couple of different things. Like one is just that reminder, that voice in my head that says, be you, like, so what? You know, like just have fun. Um, and it is really, so one of the things I do do actually to make me feel like me is I pay a lot of attention to um, my cyclical energy. So like I'm very in tune with like, how am I feeling at different stages of the month? I'm tapping into my menstrual cycle and being like, okay, I know I feel like ridiculously creative and want to talk to all the people during my ovulation. So like, maybe that's a great time to actually schedule and writing my blog posts or like, remember, if I can remember that and be in tune with it, it means that I'm more active on Instagram that week, maybe, or like do some random lives. And when I, when I do that, I just notice like I'm much more magnetic because it does feel more like me versus say, um, during my menstrual cycle where I don't feel like, like being external, I want to do internal things. So that's where I will sit behind my computer screen and like review things and like figure out like what's working, what's not. And I might not do as many Instagram lives. I might still like comment and post or something, but I'm just like, that has been like a big part of my strategy is getting to know myself to a level where I know where my energy is best matched because when I'm operating in alignment with that energy, then I, I just come across more naturally. It feels good to me. I think that's the big important thing is like, it, I feel really fueled by it. I can like jump between tasks easier and feel energized. And I think that really 
that comes across to people watching and tuning into whatever you're putting out there. So that, that's a huge one for me. Um, how else I authentically show up as myself. Um, it has been a little bit of that, like checking in with my, you know, community, um, like my business community, my entrepreneurial friends and masterminds and reflecting on some things. Like when I'm feeling a little bit stuck, like, Oh, I've been working on this new opt-in and like, it's not really working. And I keep saying this, then like, I'll take that to the group. And what I love about that, because they know me as me, they can reflect back and be like, yeah, but remember how you said you really wanted to actually talk about this other thing or yes, that sounds good, but it sounds like you're pushing. What's your energy like at the moment? What's this really about? You know, like they, they always are able to kind of put me back in my place, which is really great. So I love having that support network and then doing it for myself. Uh, like it's coming back to that point about like knowing myself, like I know that I need a lot of spaciousness. Like I'm someone who needs a lot of grounding. Um, I need time with myself, which is where coffee comes in. I, it, um, I sort of joke with my community that I like, I don't shut up talking about coffee because coffee is so much more than coffee to me. Like I have a whole ritual around taking myself on a coffee date. It really started at that burnout phase in my life where I had to learn how to go slow, learn how to spend time with myself, like all of that. And I realized that for me to be authentically me in a business context, I need a lot of that spaciousness and grounding behind the scenes because that's where I get my creativity from. And particularly, you know, as a coach, I am holding space for others a lot. So I've noticed the more that I step into that type of work, the more I need um, not just self-care, like this deep, radical self-care in my life. And that is, that is part of the fuel for my business as well. And it took me quite a while to, to integrate that into a business sense. Like I thought, no, 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 self-care is not business. Like that's, that's everything I do for my personal well-being, and I'm really good at journaling and I, you know, I read all these books and that's my self-care, but no, actually my self-care is like foremost in my business. Like I need that kind of deep radical self-care. Otherwise I can't show up at all. And then I'm pushing and striving and like, you know, showing up on a live and stretching myself, you know, like it's not, that's not authentic. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because I think it's so true, especially for my like coaching clients where they have they, their coaches as well. Yeah. And we hold so much space for our clients, yeah. um, whether we're on a call with them or we're working on something, like a project with them or not, like we still hold that space. Like yeah. there's only so much that you can do. And it's important. I feel like um, I know for myself, I've had to set up some rituals when working with clients at the beginning and at the end to make sure that I could hold space for them in that way. And like, whether oh, it's- I love like, that. Could you, could you share what yours are? Because I love that. And I, I've done like all sorts of different things to work out what, what, is, what is the beautiful bookend that works for me. Yeah, one of the things that I feel like works for me is um, lighting a candle at the beginning mm -hmm. of a session and then blowing it out, like actually blowing Ooh, it out. Yeah. Like not um, like snuffing it or like using a device, but like blowing it out. Um, yeah. has been huge for me because it, it's like a beginning and an end. Yes. I'm opening up space. Um, and I usually give myself like a little talk beforehand. Like I have like little I am statements, confidence boosters, like, you know, that I'm going to ask the right questions to my clients. They're going to be able to dig deep and get what they need based off of the questions I'm asking. I kind of just like role play a little bit with that. Light the candle. Um, I have essential oils. Um, that I love to use like beforehand that I like will put on that kind of just gives me that mood boost mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm able to show up and like um, give from my heart and give in a big way and then um, yeah like to blowing out that candle has been a, a big piece like it gives me the ability just to like close out um, one of the people I know um, I don't do this as often but somebody was telling me like cutting the cords too like I'm imagining like mm -hmm. Um, like you're releasing their energy to give it back to them because I know like when I first started my business I would hold on to so much like I would like I'm a very sensitive empathetic empathetic person as it is so like if you tell me something that's going on with you like I might be thinking about it like 10 days from now and like trying to figure out like how I could help or what solution I could bring to it and then it it dampers me right like because I'm holding on to all of my clients yeah. energies as well as trying to you know work through my own stuff um, so having that ability to like 
in the session and it doesn't mean that I'm not thinking about my client anymore, but it gives them space to, to give back their energy so they can work on it and they can self coach and self um, work for it as well to where it's not something like I'm not holding that energy and space for them anymore. I'm giving it back to them. Yeah. So that they can do the work I think can do. this conversation is so critical, particularly for, for the community tuning, tuning in right now, because you're all heart centered people. So naturally you're going to be more em empathic and probably holding a lot more than you even realize. And Darlene, I love that you share like this candle thing is beautiful because what I love about it is it's very start finish. Yeah. What I noticed that I was doing, I do some similar kind of incantations at the start and like talk myself into it and like essential oils. I, I do all of that. And what I was noticing is I was doing all of the beginning stuff, but I was never closing out the session. I was like rushing off onto the next call or activity or whatever I had going on. And I was exhausted. Like I was just feeling depleted or like I was noticing, which is really interesting for me. This is where I know that like something's missing. I love the work that I do. And I was noticing just before a, like a coaching session, like my gold, like my, the thing that I love so much and come alive from that I was like, oh, beforehand. And I was like, that's not right. Something's going on here. And it was actually a really interesting conversation I had with a holistic counselor that I was seeing at the time. And we talked a bit about the energy and I wasn't closing it out. She's like, well, what can you do at the end? And that was so powerful for me. So at the moment, all I do is kind of three deep breaths to kind of ground, but I love the blowing out because it's crisp and it's like finished. I think that's so great. And if anyone listening in doesn't have any kind of ritual around that, I would highly recommend it. Yeah. And I, like, and especially too, like with clients, like I try to give myself space in between sessions, but some days it doesn't work out. Like some days I might have like back to back calls where I'm leaving one. Yeah. And I found for myself like giving closure to one. And even if I only have like two minutes to like breathe and like just like reset, yeah. but blowing mm -hmm. out the candle and then relighting it again, even for this new experience. So it feels like, mm -hmm. uh, like there's like a container for like, like the commute, right? Like when I worked outside the home and I, you know, and was in retail management, like I would go to work and then I would like leave and go home. And like most of my job, there wasn't anything I could do when I left. So there was like that closure. And there was also that time to like decompress, like on the drive home to like transition back to being with my family mm -hmm. for doing things like that. So I try to make sure that I still set up ways in my business to where like there's that in between, like it's not just going from, you know, a coaching call to writing a blog post to feeding my kids lunch to, you know, doing all the different things. Like there has to be like a place where you can like just take a second for yourself and transition in between like that next task, even if it's like one minute of just breathing and being still when you finish a call before you check your email or mm -hmm. that next thing, but like honoring that space that they're like, that we need to not feel like we're um, hustling. Like I hate the word hustle. The word hustle like brings up so much like anxiety and stress inside my body. Like, even use the word, I'm like, nope, like I can't, I have to have like, um, I can't hustle. I have to have like an easy pace that feels good to me to do the work and to do the things that I love doing it. If I feel like I have to hustle, like I don't want to do anything like that's going to shut me down quicker than anything else will. <laughs> I, I love this so much. I mean, this is exactly how I started to get into the niche of like breaking up with busy because, because of that point. And I think this is so relevant to entrepreneurs because we get into what we do because we love it. And it's been a whole different experience for me in my relationship with busy as an entrepreneur versus my relationship with busy as like working within an organization. And, you know, I thought I had it all sorted out. I thought, no, like I abandoned the word busy from my vocabulary. And now I'm doing something that I really love and I have to watch myself in a whole new way, which is why like everything I teach step one is always space, spaciousness. Like I talk about the transitions as well. Like it's, how much attention are you paying to each of those transition points? And I think you tell a busy person to stop and they freak out. Well, I know that that was definitely me. I was like, no, no, I, stop. I don't need to stop. I, like, I need to keep going. So I sort of say, look, spaciousness or taking that breath, it, it can be so small. It's like just building that muscle into your life. Like just how could you breathe a little bit more space into your life right now? 
even if you're doing something that you absolutely love. Yeah. And so many people I notice, like when you like get on a phone with a friend that you haven't talked to for a little bit, or if you run into somebody at the grocery store and you're like, Hey, how have you been? Most people's answer is like, Oh, we're good. We're busy. Yeah. And yeah. I, it, it was a kind of uh, mind blowing to me. Like when I noticed that this was a common thing, because it was something that I would say always like, Oh, we're good. We're busy. And I realized that like busy was like, like it was like a badge of honor of some kind, like oh, we're doing all the things and life is good. And you know, we're going to baseball practice and soccer practice and school and I'm making dinner and we're planning a family vacation and we're doing this. And I'm like, all of a sudden I realized I'm like, that's actually not a good thing. Like we don't need to be busy. You can still enjoy life and enjoy your business and do all the things, but you don't, it doesn't have to be like this big, huge chunk of time. Like you, if you're super intentional and know what your goals are and what you're working on, you can do it in less hours, less time so that you can do the things that you love. So you don't have to feel busy <laughs> nonstop and feel like you have to be doing all the things. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. So finding ways just to like slow down, do it, be more intentional. Like uh, I know for myself, like one of the things that I work with my clients now is making sure that they only have to work 30 hours or less in their mm -hmm. business. And that they're able to do that because they're strategic. Like I could sit at my desk for 60 hours a week and probably accomplish just as much as I do in 30 minutes because I'm just finding busy work, right? Like we're so in tune to feeling like we have to do something, like stay busy. Like we can waste hours of our time, right? On social media, like you could literally sit down on the couch and be an hour later, like, oh, I'm still on social media scrolling through like mindless posts that don't even mean anything to you that you're not even commenting on or engaging in yeah. just because like you're looking for a way I feel like to like to have like that quiet space and that's our mind's way of being busy <laughs> I think absolutely it is like busy in itself is a numbing exercise I feel like we hold tight to busy because actually we're pushing something else away because if I'm busy I don't have to feel like I'm a fraud or a failure or not coping with my business or if I'm busy I don't have to feel all of that stress or the questions that are piling up or anything like that. So if we're holding tight to busy, like we're pushing all of the stuff we don't want to feel away. But I mean, Brene Brown has this incredible quote, which says we cannot selectively numb our emotions. We cannot selectively numb our emotions, meaning you can't numb your pain or your stress or your discomfort and still expect to experience joy and pleasure and fun and fulfillment. Yeah. You have to open yourself up to all of it. So for me, that relationship with busy, um, particularly as a business owner, has to be about how are you serving your feel goods? Like how are you following your joy? How are you surrendering so that you can, so that you can experience, yeah, all of them. Yeah. No, and it's so true. Like owning those moments in that space and just being okay with like the stillness so that you can have a joyful life and do the things that you want to do. It, it's, it's beautiful, right? Like there's yeah. no other way to describe it. Like when you, when you finally get there and you're like, you stop doing the busy work so that you can actually just enjoy your life. And yeah, sometimes we're doing that busy work because there's something hard or scary that we know we need to do. Like we, yeah. we know that there's a I have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Or like, we know there's a tough, tough conversation we need to have, or that we're going to do something that puts us outside of our comfort zone. Mm. Yeah, so we take all that time, right? Like we do busy work so we don't have to we can avoid it. But then once we actually like push the busyness away and do what, whatever it was that was being fearful in that moment, like it, it's such a breath of fresh air afterwards. You're like, oh, that actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I didn't die. <laughs> like... Um, creating that video that I wanted to write or, or, or to do, like whatever those things are, like feel so good on the other side that we. And I will, yeah. And I, and I think I, I will just acknowledge anyone who's listening in and feeling a little bit of resistance and wanting to push us away right now, because I get that it feels really hard. Like it is uncomfortable to stop. Like it was one of the, like the most terrifying things I ever had to do was spend time by myself when I, had that burnout and I had to like, I didn't go to work. It started with two weeks. I didn't go to work for six weeks and I had to just be by myself and stop. And that was terrifying for me because I'd never done it before. So if you're feeling res any kind of resistance to this conversation, 
I want like my invitation would be to just acknowledge that the resistance is your discomfort and that it's it's supposed to feel uncomfortable. It's supposed to feel uncomfortable at first because you're learning something new. You've not done this thing before, but as with anything that you've learned already in your business and brought to life, the discomfort will, 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 will change. It'll shift as you, as you do it, as you experience it more and more. And, you know, like Darlene said, you know, you will get to this point where suddenly you're like, Hey, that wasn't so bad. I could do that again. The moment you've done something once you already want to do it again because you're like, Oh yeah, that wasn't so bad. Yeah. It's like, you're like, that was actually fun. I yeah. Enjoyed- yeah yeah oh i can do this thing let me do it again you're yeah. like when you look back you're like what was i so afraid of this whole entire time like i was like talking about st- telling ourselves stories again right like yeah. you know, all these like scary stories that's gonna happen and then we do it and we're like oh that was actually not scary like it was fun i enjoyed it um i got something from it and i i, I want to do it more and then we we're able to finally step out of that um, scary place and like just start doing it but it's like those stories that we tell ourselves man we just love to scare the crap out of ourselves and make things like these little teeny things and like these massive mohills <laughs> yeah, absolutely so the more you do it like we're talking about how to like attract and stand out the more you do it the more magnetic you become to others as well so for me that's like been my whole um mission around reigniting the joy in people's life because when you can experience joy even if you've got tough stuff going on when you can choose joy when you can follow what feels good to you you become that example for others they look at you and they're like oh oh that's a possibility you know just like i looked at all of those people who were moving to london who had never talked about it before i was like oh well they can do it they didn't talk about it for ages they haven't been dreaming about it they don't have the savings they did it Of course I can do it too. I love that you just said that because when we do those big, scary things that we're afraid to do, it gives everybody else permission to do those big, scary things that they've been holding back on. And that's what I think is like brilliant about the work that we do. And like, like when we finally put ourselves aside and show up for those that need us to, like we're opening doors for so many more people to do what they need to do and step into their amazingness and their awesomeness. And it, it's like, it's, you're just giving permission to other people. The more that we show up, the more that we do those things, um, other people are able to follow those footsteps and feel like they can do it too. Yeah. So, yeah. So as we start to kind of wrap up, cause I could talk to you all day about this stuff. Um, <laughs> and I know that, um, I have a couple of fun questions I like to ask. Oh. Yeah, go for it. Just to kind of get a sneak peek into your life. But I'm curious <laughs> if you have a morning routine. And if you do, what does that look like? <laughs> so it changes all the time. Currently, my morning routine is I'm sleeping in for some reason. I'm an early morning person, but for some reason, I'm sleeping in at the moment. So this is my current routine. I'm waking up naturally, which I love. I roll out of bed and the very first thing I do is I go and put the kettle on and I pour myself a hot cup of water. It's not that interesting. (laughs) It's a hot cup of water. And I do like, I I brush my teeth and I do like um, oil pulling, like some sesame oil. It's it's something that's really supported my immunity system. It's been incredible. You do with sesame oil? Yeah, like um, not the stuff you cook with. It's like organic raw sesame. So it doesn't really have a flavor. Okay. I've um, heard of coconut oil doing that, but I've never heard of it. Yeah. yeah, like there's there's different types of oil you can do it with. Um, this was just um my my yoga teacher and a very good friend of mine, she's an Ayurvedic pr- practitioner. It was something that she suggested she does hers with sesame and it's just worked really well for me. So I've kept up with that. Um so I kind of like don't know what that order is because I'm kind of still asleep. I tell my partner not to talk to me in the mornings. I like to be quiet. Sometimes I like to say more often than not, but, um, you know, based on the last week's data, I, I, I would be lying to you. Um, I sit down and do a meditation of some sort, like maybe it's a five minute guided one. I've been loving, I've been doing the 21 day, um, Oprah and Deepak Chopra do a free 21 day meditation series every so often. So I've been going through one of those, which is beautiful. I need to be guided. Yeah. And that would kind of be it, you know, have my shower, get ready for the day. Um, coffee, 
date with myself is usually like my morning routine. Um, you know, at time of recording, we're on stay at home policies right now. So I haven't been physically going to the coffee shop, but I, if you, you know, spoke to me at any other time, I would have said that that's my morning routine. Yeah. Yeah. I do the hot water and oil pilling thing, but my morning routine is to have a coffee date with myself every single day. Um, sometimes it's, you know, 15, 20 minutes, sometimes it's an hour or longer. Yeah. I love that you, um, make that time just for you because it's so important. Um, and right now, like, yeah, like life is different with what's going on in the world. And like, you're honoring the space that you need to sleep in more. And I was just talking with a client earlier this morning too. Like she was saying the exact same thing. She's like, I don't know what's going on right now, but I've been sleeping in like two hours later than I typically do. Yeah. And I was like, that's like, honor that. Like your body is telling you it needs to slow down. It needs a little bit more of something because there's so many things I feel like that are like, we're not even, we don't even know we're worried about or thinking about right now because of such, exactly. all the uncertainty that's going on right now. Like subconsciously, there's gotta be so much stuff that's like our bodies are trying to handle. And so if your body needs more sleep, like take it. <laughs> yep. I completely agree. <laughs> Listen to your body. Yes, absolutely. It, it knows all. <laughs> so I'm curious what is, or who has been the biggest influencer or mentor in your life? Oh my goodness. So do, do you know what? I got asked this question on a podcast interview recently um, and I had a slightly different response, but for some reason, the answer that's coming up for me right now when I get asked that question is my partner um, because he like, I just am so proud of how we've integrated our lives together and um, how he has like, he's been such an influence on me because he's from the very first moment I met him, he's completely and wholly accepted me for who I am. And that's been so important for my business journey because he celebrates my, like my tiniest wins. Like I get an email response from someone and he thinks it's the best thing ever. And I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. There's many more steps, <laughs> but, um, he really mirrors back to me like permission to be myself. Yes. That's beautiful. Like so many people say like big name people and like all these big influencers, but um, I think it's those that are around us in our day to day or like special family members or people that we're in more confident. Those are the people that I feel like are the true influencers in our life. It doesn't always have to be like Oprah or like these big people because we have more of a day-to-day -day personal relationship being built with these people that are in our lives. Yeah. I don't know if I'll play this back to him or not. I'll decide. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, nah. <laughs> I'm joking. It's a beautiful thing though, that you can say that it's your partner. And especially like right now, I know so many families are getting a chance to, to connect in new ways and be closer together because we're not so busy <laughs> doing all the yeah. Things. like we're having a chance to really connect with those that we love the most and we sometimes spend the least amount of time with right like we live together so we are like we're doing things like we have stuff that's going on but we don't always get a chance to truly connect um I feel like with my kids right now like I'm building even deeper relationships like we're so already close but I'm able to build those relationships at an even deeper level right now mm -hmm. because we're you know, we're stuck at home. I'm asking more questions. I'm getting to know like things that I normally might not have had as much time to ask. I love that. I love that so much. It's, it's, I think it's a unique time. Like there's so much uncertainty and like worry and like, it's hard to be, to stay at home and not go do all the things that we normally do. But I think there's such a beautiful thing that's happening across the world right now with getting to, to closer with those that we love and we spend, um, more time with now than we normally can. So yeah. All right. So happy places are like, I feel like I need a place to like, like my favorite happy place is like the beach with my toes in the sand. Like that lights me up if I can have a chance to do that. So I'm super curious, what is your happy place? If you could go anywhere, do anything, like how do you like to recharge yourself? Oh yeah. Give me a beach anytime. Like I grew up in coastal places. London is not on the beach, but London is also my happy place. Like I, after seven years of living in London, just put me in any of the tourist spots in London. Like I just love just walking around the tourist populated areas. I still find them so beautiful. Put me in 
any coffee shop with like a really good flat white, um, but sunshine beach, London coffee, I'm set. <laughs> I knew you were going to pull that coffee in there somehow. I yeah. Know. Oh, of course. <laughs> just, just title the podcast coffee. <laughs> We're, we're having coffee together. Yeah. <laughs> I've not been having coffee with you because I have my coffee with me still this morning. So that makes me happy. <laughs> um, and the last question, and I know that it's kind of a little bit wonky right now because we can't travel. Um, but if you could travel anywhere, if I was to give you a plane ticket right the second, where would you go? I would go to a place called Byron Bay, which is in Australia and just so happens to be like a place that I feel is my soul place. Um, just so happens when I met my partner, his family is from a town very close to Byron Bay. So he knew it really well. So maybe that, maybe that was part of the attraction. <laughs> um, you can get me close to Byron Bay, but there's just something magical about that place. It's coastal. It's on the most magnificent beach and it's a small, beautiful town. Um, I always feel at home there. Um, and whilst I go back to Australia re fairly regularly to see friends and families, for some reason, I just like, that was my immediate response when you asked me that question. I've got a long list of like travel destinations I want to go to, but yeah, when you ask me that right now, that's what, that's what comes up. Um, that sounds amazing. And I think I'll book myself a travel ticket. Yes. And let's yeah. go. And we'll it's incredible. <laughs> and I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you where the good coffee shops are. <laughs> Danielle, this has been so much fun talking with you. Um, tell our listeners how they can connect with you. Where do you love to hang out on social media? What's your website? All those fun things. Yeah, so my business is the daisypatch.co.uk. So come and find out everything there. My favorite place to hang out socially is Instagram. Well, like socially online. Obviously, you can find me in the coffee shops, you know, in person, but <laughs> socially online is Instagram at the Daisy Patch Coaching. Awesome. And um, yeah, thank you so much, Danielle, for being on here with me today. Is there anything else that you want to tell our listeners or anything you want to share with them or gift them? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I was thinking when we were talking is I do have a freebie um, that I created a little while ago and it's actually kind of not active on my website, but you can go and find it with this link, which is the daisypatch.co.uk slash busy. And it's really going to talk you through some of those steps around like your relationship with busy. Um, and if you're feeling a little bit of like pulled in all these directions in your business right now, I think that would be a really cool one. And I have a podcast as well. So if you love these kinds of conversations, uh, my podcast is called let it shine and you can find all the details on my website, but um, I'm assuming you're a podcast this night. Come and come and tune in. Let me know what you think. Leave a review. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Yes. Leave reviews. We love reviews. Yeah. We love reviews. Yeah. Right this minute, um, leave us a review. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're the best because not only do they make me feel good, <laughs> um, you know, to be really honest, they make me feel good, but also like it really is part of that attraction mechanism we've been talking about throughout throughout the the, the conversation today, which is when when you get a hint from someone else's experience or story, or someone leaves a review and you read it, it's so much for you to be like, yes. That's what I need to hear. I'm going to go tune in. Yes, absolutely. And it definitely makes our day. So make our day. Go leave a review. <laughs> we would totally appreciate it. Danielle, thank you so much for being on. It's such a pleasure to get to talk to you. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me.